it's not going to be quite the same because I don't know. I was going to see if you or um, Audrey could do the. There's a part where you guys sing something different while I sing the same thing. Yeah. So, and that is what makes all the difference, really. But Audrey's not here, and I forgot to ask her to come. When you sing her. something the same, but it's <laughs> yeah. different. It's like I sing. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful name. And there's, they start singing, there is no one like you in the... And when you sing it together, that's the cool part. Yeah. That's the coolest part. So it's like... <coughs> Do you want a mic, Casey? Are you going to sing tonight? You don't have to. <laughs> if you're not feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> that's my answer. A snore and a willing hand. <laughs> All right, so let's start. Let's start. I don't know if Stephanie the... knows how to give funny looks. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> well, you guys know every meme that says something about your looks and your face and not being able to hide it is totally from God for me. <laughs> from God. Sometimes my mouth is too, but I'm working on that one. I don't always have control, but I'm getting it back. So there you go. <laughs> okay. I love you. I know. You're crazy. <laughs> Okay, let's start at the very beginning. Okay. That's why I hope you're not mad at me, but yeah. <laughs> I know I know the bass drum because hey, that's the important part because it picks it, it up. Time, so. so what? <laughs> I know. Well, that's why I was like, well, if I show you, then you'll remember. But just don't hate me. <laughs> I do it with everybody. So. We <coughs> <I'm sorry. coughs> start from the beginning. And try Universal over time. Yes. Sign. <laughs> <laughs> no.
hair is white as wool And I know that your voice, it sounds like water Jesus, you're beautiful I know that your eyes are like flames of fire I know that your hair is white as wool And I know that your voice, it sounds like water Jesus, you're beautiful I know that your eyes are like flames of fire I know that your head is white as wool And I know that your voice, it sounds like waters Jesus, you're beautiful Right here, these two, and then you go back. You're beautiful. Oh, Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Oh, yeah. Four is, oh, what a beautiful name. That's four. something in order to my hands will start knowing which way to go, but it doesn't always work that way. If I play something in order like that, then I can tell my hands which way to go. 
Gotcha. Okay. No, no, no. I gotcha. <laughs> Let's see if we can go one more time through. So it, always, then... almost always, when you go into, no, that's not true. Never mind. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say every time you go into the course, I should always go soft, but I remember that that wasn't true, so I stopped no, myself. No, you should be able to tell by what, how I'm going. How you're it. singing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Let's just start over again one more time for Audrey. There's a part I want you to do for me. I'm gonna still sing. Yes. Oh, what a beautiful. If it doesn't work out, then I'll just go to the same part as you guys. So don't freak out. If it doesn't work out, we'll just. So she, when we're done with this, is when we go here and she stays here. Stephanie stays Sorry, here. Sorry, Stephanie, later. I wasn't paying attention. No, you're doing good. Awesome. <laughs> Actually, awesome. I love it. Don't worry. You're doing great.
And oh, what a beautiful, beautiful name. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful face. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful name. Jesus. Hold on. And oh, no, keep going. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful name. Oh, what a beautiful. Just start building it up. When we get to the really loud part, you'll know, and that's when you come in. And Jesus. And oh, I know, it's hard. It's like singing harmony. Yes. When you first start singing harmony, you're supposed to sing. <laughs> Music. Now we're doing this one second and want to see at the end if we can go right into the other one. So like instead of just stopping all together, just hold the note and we'll start the other one, but we'll see. All right, you ready? We're the word at the beginning One with God the Lord most high You hid in glory in creation Could not hold you 
What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Hmm. I love it. Me too, it's going to be really good. I love it. It's like, like there's not really a song, hopefully there's not a song that's so high it's going to take my voice away before I start. You're telling me to stop, Pat? And I said, no, that was my, the name of Jesus, Pat. <laughs> and she was like, oh, well, that's also your stop it, Pat. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, apparently it means a lot of things. <laughs> that was actually really good. Oh, that was good. Okay, I think I have a huge. Desire for your 15th birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> there we go. <laughs> the there we go. Oh, he's already conscious. Perfect. The team is going to be. Does anybody need some water? I got my mint. This would be a little <laughs> reliable. You got your mint? Thank you, Sister good. Ruby. Okay. Nay, I need some more of those Japanese <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Which ones? We need to go back to the chat. That store. Which thing do you need? Oh, those mint things? Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, those were the miracle mints. Not mints. Tabs. Whatever. I want to go back to that store. Okay, so these are for you to give out to the children when I preach. There is one up here. So in the event that you don't have enough, you take this one and you go give it to Alex. Or you give, take this one and go give it to Alex. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got P, Maddie, Josh, Grace, Alexis, Cameron, Cameron. I don't know if Cameron wants one of those. Tim, Jacob, Haley, Riley, Hayden. Well, where's my? We're gonna need three more copies. Or you can maybe ask your dad. I don't know if he's around. I did inventory on the shirt that you gave me. Yes. I was hoping that there was more black because everybody so far was asking for black. Yeah. It's all white. So I was, Yvonne was one of the ones that wanted the black. And so we were talking to him and trying to, Teresa had a really good idea about tie-dyeing that. Yes. And doing it something. Yes. So we could tie-dye the white shirt. Are you talking yes. about the uh, blue shirt? All the white. I'm like, oh, nobody yeah. wants a white shirt. Oh, like, you have yeah. to keep telling them, I'm sorry, I don't have black. Like, all the blacks are, like, in weird sizes. Yeah, right. Yes, I don't yellow? understand that. Like, what kind of sizes are we talking Like, all smalls and all mediums, and then, like, a few 2Xs. So I don't have, like, large or extra large bases. So that's, that's the most fine. popular size. Right. Hey, what are you so, <laughs> so if we tie dye them, then you could even incorporate them. I don't know what your plans are for Easter and stuff yet, but you could yeah. do like all of those together. The ladies said that they would, they could even incorporate it into the ladies' meeting, and we could tie them all. Oh, so that would be cool. Well, I'm wondering for I don't know what's um, for. Um, what is it called? Squads. Green. Okay. Like a purple team, a green team, and that would be good. And an orange team. Because I could still cover it whatever you wanted it. Yeah. Just a basic yeah. Which would actually be kind of cool. The white's not flying yet. Nobody wants a white team. Nobody. I, I don't know that why that was purchased. I'm so sorry. That's all right. That was promised to me. Um, what a beautiful name. Um, I don't even know if I feel like saying it. Yeah. In D. Such a hard break. 
Yeah. You should have told me. I could have done a faded thing or a glow. Well, you know, from now on, I, unless it's specifically, line. unless it's you were said real straight to be, line, so that's well, why yes, I was. Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, but on this, I like what I would like. I would have tried to match it up more closer or whatever to do a grade. I set myself my wrong sermon. I set myself the sermon that I had made for the kids with all the blanks in it. So I just opened up my sermon and it was just, it looked like this, all blanks for the kids, the kids version. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta resend it to myself. Well, so you're using, uh, you changed the kids version into the adult version. So that way no, have no, to no, stay too no, 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 I wow. made the, I made the kids, the kids books for tonight so they wouldn't be bored. I didn't, I promise. <laughs> I promise I did it. I did it, I did it. I did it. Well, hey, you know they got sermon books out there. I did it. Well, good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you all tonight. I'm glad that uh, we gathered in here together to open up our service. And uh, as we open up tonight, let's all stand together and we'll pray and ask the Lord just to minister in our service tonight. Uh, we're thankful uh, for the day we've been given. We're looking forward to this service tonight. Uh, that we're going to have a message from Pastor Danae in just a little bit, and uh, it's going to be a good message. And I know, and uh, she, I don't know, is, is it new or is it a... Uh, she was telling Brother Daryl that she was just taking the kids' version and making it for adults, so... <laughs> no, 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 she didn't. She didn't, dear. We would like a kid's sermon, though, Danae. Well, let's all pray together tonight and ask the Lord to bless our time. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this day together to be gathered in your presence tonight. And Father, we just ask that you would bless this time. Lord, we uh, thank you for uh, meeting us in this place tonight. Thank you that your glory is going to rest in us and upon us. And uh, Father, move through us tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, sing together as Stephanie comes to lead. Amen. Hey man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, even with the weather we got coming. But I know the one thing I love to do is praise Jesus. You guys know this one. <laughs> so help me sing it tonight. Let's give him some praise, man. Oh yeah. Oh, I cannot run away from your unfailing love. Oh no.
nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of jesus what a powerful name it is the name of jesus worship God, not because of what you can do for us, God, or what you've done for us, God, but simply because of who you are, Lord God. There is no one like you in all the earth. There is no other name in all the earth but the name of Jesus to save, to heal, God, to strengthen, to take away the fear, Jesus. We thank you for who you are, Jesus. There is no one like you in all the earth.
Jesus, cause Jesus, you're beautiful. 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 And oh, what a beautiful, beautiful name. And oh, what a beautiful, beautiful face. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful name. Jesus. And oh, what a beautiful, beautiful name. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful face. lift our hands up together and just worship the Lord. Father, I thank you tonight for such a beautiful name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're a mighty God. Thank you that there is no Lord like you. You're the King of kings and you're the Lord of lords. Amen. And we praise you tonight, Lord, for it. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let's lift our hands and thank the Lord for that tonight. Lord, we receive that word in our hearts tonight. Lord, it fills our spirit, Father. We trust in you. We believe in you. We believe, Lord, tonight and trust you, Father, that uh, these words be brought to pass. We thank you for your words that are spirit and they are life to us tonight. And we thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Well, you may be seated tonight. I appreciate the Lord and his ministry in our church tonight, and uh, it's as a powerful, and it just shows you what a powerful name the name of Jesus is in our, in our life and how he operates. Amen. Well, we want to pray together tonight, and uh, I want to ask if you have a special request, we want to receive uh, those uh, prayer requests tonight so we can pray with you about your need. Uh, Stacy.
Okay, we'll pray for her tonight. And then go ahead, Josh. Yeah, she'll pray for him tonight. Amen. Yeah, we'll pray for America, especially Sister Linda's need. Amen. Any other requests tonight, Trace? Okay, well, we'll pray for her tonight. The Lord will help her. Go ahead. Yes, we'll pray for that tonight. Amen. Yeah. Um, I have a couple, actually. Um, she prayed for my dad. His, he's got one of his legs. is just, it's it's not gotten better. It's kind of getting worse. And so um, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm really worried about that. He's, and he's been falling here and there. Um, so just keep, you know, keep my parents in your prayers. They need, they need a lot of help and some miracles. Um, also, um, uh, there's a there's a kid in uh, that was in my program last year. Um, he was a he was a struggling kid, had a lot of issues, um, had a lot of behavior problems for half the year, and then um, he had been taken out of his home, put in a foster care home, and that foster care parent the parents they were just the greatest people. And as he was in that positive environment, that loving environment, he just flourished. And now he's um, you know he's moved on to kindergarten, and he's been doing great this year. Well, I just I just found out that he's going to go back to his real mom and. Um, you know, like I pray that God would help this mom to, you know, be able to take care of him and, and be the loving mom that, that he created her to be. Um, but I also pray that, you know, he just keeps his hand stretched in front of that little boy and that, you know, he doesn't go backwards, but that, you know, the mom got the help she needed and that he's going back to a positive environment. So just keep that little boy in your prayers, too. Okay. All right. We'll pray for Pastor. that. Yeah. Uh, there's a gentleman that I work with. Uh, he just, uh, him and his wife just found out this last week she has breast cancer and so of course they're very um, very devastated by that news um, but the great thing about it is he serves the same God that we do mm -hmm. I know that he has and his wife has a relationship but they will get through it and so uh, him and I are praying and believing together that it will be taken Lord, care of yes amen we'll pray for that tonight Lord touch her in Jesus name amen Amen. Unspoken request. Riley, you got a request? Yes, let's pray for Brother Dwayne. Continued healing and recovery in his body. Amen. Well, Teresa, let's come up and we'll pray and anoint a prayer cloth for you tonight. And let's all pray together and ask the Lord to minister over these needs. And we'll pray for this prayer cloth too. Amen. Uh, you can, uh, if you'd like to come down with us, uh, come down or uh, just where you're at, stretch your hands towards heaven. Go ahead, Danae, and play something as we pray tonight over this. What's your friend's name? That's okay. Okay. Okay.
Amen. Let's all pray. Father, I thank you for all your wonder-working power that's alive in this church tonight. Jesus, you're alive and you're working in us tonight. I thank you, Father, that Jesus, that you bring healing into the hearts of these that need to be healed. Thank you, Lord, you bring deliverance into those that need to be delivered. Thank you, Lord, strongholds fall at your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, demons tremble at that name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that there is power in your wonderful name, Jesus. And Father, I pray tonight that you would minister to these needs. We believe for healings and we believe for miracles, breakthroughs and testimonies, God, that as we're your witnesses here on earth, God, that you would use us for your glory. So God, you get all the glory for it. Thank you, Jesus, for working in this church and working in the lives of people in this church. And thank you, Lord, that it's going all around. Your virtue, your healing, your power, God, is going from the sanctuary and it goes north, south, east, and west. Thank you, Lord, for it. Oh, God, let your glory cover the earth as the waters cover the seas, God. We pray, Father, for removal of, Father, a judgment, and we thank you for the mercy, God, that you've given to us in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Amen, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. All right, we're going to receive tonight's offering, and thank you, uh, Brother Mike's getting the offering, uh, uh, the offering container there. So we thank God for being able to give and to sow, and uh, we always appreciate every gift that is given tonight. And so as you give, thank you for that, and we're believing God that the Lord will bless you uh, in the area of need that you're showing and believing God for tonight. We'll pray with you tonight. Amen. Brother Clyde, would you bless tonight's offering for us as we give? Yes, Father, we do ask your blessing upon the offering and bless upon your people. And Father, we just love you. We want you to continue to bless the heart of your people. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
praise tonight for all his goodness, joy of the Lord in our life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right. Well, before Danae comes tonight, just a couple of announcements. Next Sunday evening is Super Bowl Sunday night around here. And so we're going to uh, gather together, make your best pot of chili and bring it out to church. And we'll be in the gym at six o'clock. And we're going to have our uh, chili cook-off uh, in 2019 here. So make sure you come and bring your very best pot. And uh, we'll all get a, uh, get enjoy together and uh, uh, see just who wins this uh, this year. So bring your uh, chili next week. Also, uh, the youth group is looking for a three-dimensional art project that they're going to be doing for Teen Talent. So they're asking everyone to bring fabric scraps and pieces for the GT Youth Art Project. And then if you would like to be part of the GT Kids Family GT Fit Tuesday night, they're going to be doing exercise classes for the family. If you would like to be part of that, you talk to Danae tonight about it, and uh, she'll tell you more about that too. And uh, I guess what Danae's saying is that we're all heavy around here. So, <laughs> no, so anyway, we all kind of are, but that's because we have so many fellowships, you know, so... All right, well, Danae's going to come and preach for you tonight. Let's give, the, uh, let's give Danae a good hand as she comes tonight to minister. Amen. Well, the Lord is so good, and I'm excited to uh, share a word tonight. I was having some problems. I opened up what I thought I emailed myself, my sermon to myself, and instead I had emailed the kids' worksheet. So when I opened it up, it was a bunch of blanks to fill in. And so I, uh, Anthony ran back home and got my laptop so I could resend myself um, so I wouldn't have to try to answer along with the kids while I was preaching because that would be a little bit challenging. Um, but uh, the Lord has really been dealing with me about his word and the power of his word. And uh, uh, a week or so ago, uh, me and my sister got to talking about a song that I used to uh, sing when I was a kid, and I thought that I could sing it just like the people. And uh, I'm not going to sing it for you tonight, but I am going to try to sign it. I've never signed it before. It's a really short song. It's an old Southern gospel song. Um, but as a kid, I loved this song. Like, it was my favorite for years when I was a kid. It was the best thing. And uh, just over the last week or so, I've been listening to it a lot. And uh, it just has a really good... Um, message behind it because we all have the word of God, right? We all have it, but how often do we really get it and just feast on it? Like how often do we just really get it out and just let it marinate in our spirits, you know? And so that's what this song is about. So I hope that it blesses you. And uh, then we're going to talk about God's word tonight. Amen. He has spoken what you read, he will do just what he said, more than eyes and ears have seen and heard. Satan lies and says you're through, there's still nothing God can do, before it has occurred, you've got his word. Take it down, dust it off, anchor to his pages. Stand up on his promises, it's the rock of ages. Through every chapter, every line, his book will stand the test of time. You can rest assured you've got his word. Just before he went away, he had one last thing to say. Your fainting faith is truth will undergird. It's no myth that he'll be back More than a matter of fact And it's not just a third You've got his word Take it down, dust it off 
tonight. Anybody got their Bibles with them tonight? Can we just stand up together and just say thank you, Lord, for your word? If you don't have it in your physical hand, hopefully you've got it in your heart. So we're just all going to stand together and say thank you, Lord. Come on, just say thank you, Lord, for your word. Oh, Lord, we are thankful for your word, God, that gives us life, God. It gives us advice, God. It gives us correction, God. It gives us direction, Lord. And I pray, God, that your word would become so real to everyone in the house tonight, God, myself included. God, take us to a new place, Father God. Take us to a new place, God. The words that are spoken, God, from my mouth, God, may they not be my words, for my words have no meaning, but rather your Holy Spirit has a word to speak and I ask God you would empty me of who I am God that your Holy Spirit could deliver a word to your people tonight God that you would open up our eyes and our ears and our hearts and that we would dust off the things God that we haven't been doing God and that we would run after your word tonight that we would read your word God that we would feast on your word God that we would be hungry hungry for the word of God Lord I pray, God, that tonight your word would explode in every heart. Your word, God, your word, may it explode from the children to the teenagers to the young adults to the adults to the senior citizens, God. Your word tonight, God, that's what we need more than anything else is an explosion of your word, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. When you think about God's word, it's just really so much more than we ever really realize in our brains you know our minds just look at it as pages put together like a book but it's so much more than that right so much more if you are uh, 12 and under hopefully you have a sheet of paper and if you take notes and fill those out I will trade them in with you at the end of the night for some GT kids tokens so make sure you're taking notes and following along so I want to tell you a couple of things about the Bible, a couple things about this, and that is, excuse me, that is that it has all kinds of reading type material inside of it, right? So we look and we see biographies inside of it. There are romance novels inside of it. There is history inside of it. There are fables inside of it. Jesus himself talks in parables, which gives us um, that kind of look. We can see like a diary where David just begins to write all of his emotions down, how happy he is, how sad he is, how excited he is, how depressed he is. Sometimes when you read it, it sounds like a 16-year-old girl and uh, (laughs) their emotions are just going back and forth you know uh we look and it's a parenting manual you know a lot of times I actually uh, a friend of mine was talking this past week to me and said who I just wish that kids came with manuals and I was like yes I needed one with Maddie and then all of a sudden it was like the Lord was saying well you know you have one right we have one we have one everybody always jokes about not knowing what to do about things but really it gives us very clear direction it's got murders and mysteries you know if you're one of those suspense lovers it's got that in there uh it's got poetry for those of you that like all those beautiful things it's got poetry it's a how-to guide there's not anything you know we always say if you don't know how to do it you can look it up on youtube you know and uh you can figure it out but really anything in your life that you don't know how to do you can look it up right here It tells you. It tells you how to do anything that you would need to do in your life is in those pages. Following the calling of God on your life and how to accomplish things are right in there. It talks about healthy living. tells you how to live healthy, healthy body, healthy spirit. It's really all inside of there. So, you know, like on the commercials, they tell you, you buy these two books and we give you this book free or whatever. There's everything you could ever possibly want and need to read all in the Bible, right? And so more than just being a good read, that's what we think of like a lot of times, right? Like we look through and we think of the stories and we think of uh, the categories that we know, right? So we think of it just kind of like this, but you know, there's the New Testament, the Old Testament, the Acts is when the church does, and we just go through like it's a, a book, a novel. But this is a book that's more than just a book, right? It's not just about stories because if it's about stories, it would become 
obsolete one day, right? There's always a better story coming out. Every Christian bookstore, uh, and you look every 10 years, it's somebody new writing the same thing, right? I mean, that's basically what it is. I mean, it's, it's an, a, a, a new face with a new author, but the same material inside of it because there's really nothing new to talk about. We just go in a cycle and we say, oh, have you got this book? It's so good book. But this, the reason why it's still so good and the reason why people still buy it and the reason why still people read it is because it's not just a book. It's the book. It is the words of God for you. Isn't that amazing? Like somebody wrote a book just for you way before you were ever born, right? Best book you could ever read. It's not a book. It's the book. And so 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says this. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. God's word is good, right? Would you say God's word is good? And we love to read about how God is victorious, don't we? And we love to read about how he was born in a manger and how he lived and how he died and how he's coming back. That excites us, right? We love to read about that. But when we realize that it's even more than that, it's actually a manual for correction and instruction in our own lives. Then there's a lot more to it than just that it's a book. Reading that same passage of scripture in the message translation it says this, there's nothing like the written word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Every part of scripture is God breathed and is useful one way or another for showing us truth. How many of you like truth? Yeah. Then I like this one, right? Exposing our rebellion. That's a, that's a deep one, right? God's word tells us when we're being rebellious. And I tell you that all of us, from time to time, that spirit comes upon us. But if we have the word of God, and we begin to read, something begins to happen inside of us, and we begin to see ourselves as the rebellious people that we are, right? And then it's up to us what we do about it. But God's word, if we would read God's word, it would tell us how we're doing. It would tell us. It is for correcting our mistakes. That's pretty good stuff. And for training us to live God's way. Through the word we are put together and shaped up for the tasks God has for us. The reason why we don't know what we're doing in life is because we're not reading what we're supposed to be doing. Everybody says, God doesn't speak to me. That's what everybody says. Everybody. I mean, it doesn't matter what church you don't go to. It doesn't matter how old or how young of people you talk to. That's, that's why everybody, everybody wants to come to a pastor and tell them that something's wrong because God isn't really speaking to them. Well, he actually is speaking to all of us. It's whether or not we're listening, okay? God is speaking to every one of us. Not every time is God going to come down like a thundering voice and just shatter your room and speak audibly to you. Not going to happen that way every day. But he's going to speak to you every day if you're listening to him. If you're listening. And so many times we say, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And everybody wants somebody to tell them what to do. But God already told them, but they don't want to read it. They don't want to fall. That's too much time. In our day and age, that is just takes up too much time. Everything can be done in five minutes or less. So if it's going to take more than five minutes, we just don't have time for that. But how bad do we really want to know what God wants from us? So the first thing that I want to tell you is search the scriptures. Search them. Now read it like this. This is how, and I've been guilty of it from time to time. This is how sometimes we read, right? We say, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, we got our chapter done, and now we're moving on. I mean, that's not really listening to the Lord speak to us. It's checking something off our to-do list. So when we begin to search the scriptures, when we begin to look into the word, and what does it mean, and how does that apply to me, then we're actually doing something, right? Just simply, just simply going through when your eyes are half shut, going through a few lines so we can go to sleep. I mean, that's not really searching the scripture, right? So we got to search the scripture so we can know it for ourselves. Okay, so whoever you're sitting next to say, know it for yourself. Know it for yourself. I mean, it's good for Pastor Brian to preach on Sunday morning. And it's good. I love to share God's word. And I, I enjoy those things. But you got to know it for yourself. 
Right? You got to know it for your own self. Because there's some crazy people out there <laughs> that might not be telling you everything just right. So you got to know it for yourself. This is what it says in Acts chapter 17. It says, and the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. And they listened eagerly to Paul's message. And they searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. You know, there has been a few people in my life that have come up to me and said, I want you to tell me again where that's at. I really want to look that up. I really want to read that. I don't take offense to that. I think it's great. There's been somebody that called me up on the phone and said, I read that verse, and I just wanted to let you know that was actually the verse after that. You didn't have the, the right number on the back of there. And I thought, hey, that's actually pretty good. I'm glad you caught that. That means you're actually reading God's word outside of church, right? So, I mean, those are good things when those things happen. Because we should be able to read God's word and know for ourselves what it says. We should be reading God's word and studying it for ourselves. Sometimes God gives a word on Sunday, and it's for us to feast on during the week, you know? Sometimes it's for us to chomp on those words for more than just 25 to 30 minutes. Maybe it's for us to meditate, search out, and read on our own on a Monday afternoon. I mean, could you believe that? Somebody actually thinking God wanted to talk to them on a day outside of church? I mean, that's, that's amazing, right? There's another thing that I want to tell you. And this, this kind of just, the Lord began to just speak this to me, and it, it just was really neat, uh, and I hope it blesses you. But talking about, there's always a revised copy of something. A really good book, that's how you know if you've read a really good book, is if there's revised copies, Right, they update the cover and they say like second edition or revised original blah 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 date, you know? And then once in a great, 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 great while, you'll see a third edition, a third revision of a book. And I mean that's that means that person wrote something that really was important, right? And so when I read this verse in Psalms 119, it says this. Your truth never goes out of fashion. It's as up to date as the earth when the sun comes up. It doesn't need a revision. But this is what the Lord said. There's no revision needed on the Bible, but there's a revision needed in you. And I thought that was really good. I was like, God, that was really great. You, you did something really cool there. I like that. So I just kept saying it over and over to myself. So you need the revision. The Bible doesn't need the revision. You're the one that needs the revision. And every generation has an obligation to revise their self from what the world has declared that generation to be, to revise their self back to match the word of God. That's been going on from Adam and Eve. They needed a revision. The word of God doesn't need a revision. Adam and Eve needed a revision, right? And every generation since, we can look all the way down. We look at Jacob. He needed a revision. We look at all these great men and women of God. They needed revisions. Your grandparents and your great-grandparents and your great-great-grandparents needed revision. You need a revision. Don't matter if you're 90 years old, you got to line yourself up with the word of God. If you are five years old tonight, you got to line yourself up with the word of God. And it says that it's as up to date as the earth when the sun comes up. Your word and truth are dependable as ever. That's what you ordered and you set the earth going. If your revelation hadn't delighted me so, I would have given up when the hard times came. But I'll never forget the advice you gave me. You saved my life with those wise words. There has been two distinct times in my life where I literally felt like my whole world was collapsing. Anybody ever have those? Like, I mean, you might as well just kill me now, God. Those kind of moments. You think, why in the world? I don't even want to wake up ever again. Anybody ever have those kind of times? There have been two times in my life where just like the whole world is devastating me. I mean, I just, it, everything's bad. And in those two times, I decided that rather than become a psychotic person, which <laughs> Maybe some of you think I already am, so I don't know. But, but whether instead, I would just spend as many hours as I could reading the Bible. And I can tell you in both of those times that literally the Lord spoke in his word. 
And we say, well, that, that isn't happening to me. That isn't ha- it doesn't happen to me all the time. But every time when I get serious enough that I don't eat or drink or go shopping <laughs> and I just stick to God's word, he, he reveals his plan to me. He tells me what to do. He tells me exactly the thing that I need that applies to my situation. You say, now that situation, if I share my stories with you, you say, that isn't even in the Bible. Well, I didn't think it was either, but it was. It was there. God's direction for my exact problem was in this word. And the yours is too. And it saved my life. Can anybody say that? You say, if, if it wasn't so, if I didn't have the revelation of God's written word, I would have given up in the hard times. Anybody testify? If you didn't have the word of God, come on, somebody should get excited. If you didn't have the word of God in your hard time, would you have been able to make it? No. No. You save my life with those wise words. So I also want to talk to you about God's word. Some people think that this was just how God wrote it. Right here, black and white. He just wrote in English for us. Gave us these awesome thumbprints right in here so we could find. I mean, he wrote it. Genesis, Exodus. This is exactly how it was written. You wouldn't believe how many people believe that. Maybe you believe that even tonight. So whatever you think, okay? But I'm just going to tell you that believe it or not, God wasn't writing in English when he wrote the word of God, okay? So there's all kinds of translations out there, and that doesn't even cover probably half of the translations that are out there, okay? So there's three different kinds. I just want to say this because it kind of gives a good explanation for for you. So the word for word is exact. They just take a word and they transpose it to a word, right? And then there's thought for thought. So they, they read that thought and then they transfer that thought into the English language. And then there's paraphrase. And that's where someone talks and then someone explains it in, in their own words and more like modern day talking. And so if you look on that chart and if the kids are looking, they should be able to find uh, some and do some uh, drawing on their, on their chart. But anyway, so basically it's telling you there's all kinds of translations of the Bible and I can't tell you that this is the one that you should be reading, okay? Because there's there's all kinds of good translations. But I will tell you, whenever you read the Bible, it's really fun sometimes, if you want to do something really fun, is when you find your favorite verse of scripture or you find something that you, uh, a chapter in the Bible that you really love, then you start reading it in the different translations and you start looking at how different people interpret those words and how different they are. I mean, they're all the same, but you begin to reread that over and over in different in different words but the same verse and it begins to get you excited because you begin to take different things as you begin to read those so I encourage you when you're reading the Bible not just to only say well I'm only going to read this translation but to look it over and and really get uh, excited about how many different types of ways that we can read uh, the word of God and how it, uh, it makes more sense for different people to read different translations the other thing that I want to tell you tonight is to believe the Bible Believe the Bible. Very important. Understand who wrote it. In order to believe it, you got to know who wrote it, right? I mean, there's a lot of people that I can read a title of a book and it can sound great. And then you look at the author and you think, well, maybe not so great, right? Maybe not, maybe not the best book that there is. But when you look at the Bible, I can believe the Bible because I know who wrote the Bible, right? First Thessalonians chapter 2 says this in the King James. It says, for this cause also thank God without ceasing because we, when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectu- effectually worketh also in you that believe. So he's saying, you realize when you heard the word of God, that it wasn't just some thought that I was thinking up in my own flesh, but you realize that it was the God who created you and created the earth speaking to you. And it says it, the same verse in the English Standard Version says this, and we also think Thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. So many people hear the words of God and say, how did you know that? I didn't know that. Pastor Brian didn't know that. Your Sunday school teacher didn't know that. The word of God says it because that's what God says in your life and he knows everything about you. So the word of God is the one that's speaking to you. It's not a person that's talking to you. 
you. It's God himself. When you preach the words of God, then God can come and talk to you and God can speak to you through those things. So you have to believe what you, what you read. It is full of promises and promises always when you read in the Bible. Every promise comes with a condition. God promises he's going to do this if you do that. So when you read the word and you study the word, you have to believe those things. You have to believe that God will do what he says he'll do if you do what you are supposed to do. Do you know what I'm saying? So God speaks in his word, and I love that God still speaks in our churches through tongues and interpretation. And even those, a lot of times, come with a promise and a condition. And a lot of times we just get so excited about the promise that we don't want to hear about the condition. But they go side and side. And so when you know God and you know how God works, God always promises good things. And he always tells you what you need to be living like to receive those good things. And then the last point that I have tonight is to change your cravings. Get hungry for the Bible. Get hungry for it. Get hungry. We're like, you literally... This can happen for you. You can actually literally wake up in the morning and feel the need to read God's word. Has that ever happened to anybody before? Like literally you could physically feel the need to read God's word. I mean, it's a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, if you guys watch um, anyone from the ramp, this, uh, this week, I actually just saw this this morning, um, because when I was talking about what I was preaching about, somebody said, you should check this out. She spoke on this, and, and you should look at it. And I was looking at it, and she was talking about changing your cravings. She was talking about craving the word of God. And so if you look her up, uh, Catherine Mullins has a really good study, and it's, a really, uh, it's not too lengthy, but too much stuff to share tonight. But it, it's really good if you have time to, to look at it. But she was talking about how people hunger after... Um, People uh, hunger after different kinds of devotional books or, you know, you get, you get an appetite for a certain style of preaching or a certain style of book or um, a different kinds of things that you enjoy. And those are great for supplemental things like uh, uh, when, you, when you're talking about eating good and eating healthy, which is not something that I, I do real well, okay? But uh, <laughs> if, you, if you do those things, they have these things like supplemental shakes and anybody ever try those before you know some of you are nodding your head some of you have the same kind of face I have about those but anyway so you you take those but if that's all you eat you're never going to be able to have very good healthy body even though they're good for you you can't live off protein shakes right can't live off of them. They're good for you, but you can't live off of them. And so she began to talk about how we can't live off of other people's interpretation of the scripture, and we can't live off of other people's devotional books, and we can't live off of other good reading that we find, but we have to get hungry for the good meal of the word of God. And so that's an important thing. And it says in Psalms 119, 103, how sweet are thy words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Who likes honey? Anybody like honey? Okay, most people raising their hand are uh, older than me, um, but not everybody, okay? But honey, honey is, uh, my husband was raising his hand, he's older than me too, but he, he was talking to my mom, now he has to do this thing at night with the honey and this tea and all this stuff, so he does all that good, you know, stuff, and honey is, is not bad, it's fine, you know, but I mean, when I'm thinking of like, ooh, some yummy, I mean, honey's not really what comes to mind, but in Bible times, okay, Brother Daryl's laughing because he's thinking of like, he's thinking of Tony's bacon, okay? So you got to think of what, what's yummy to you when you hear something yummy. In Bible times, I mean, honey was, was it. It was like, I don't know what you guys love, Donna's Donuts, okay? I mean, it was like the thing, okay? It was really good. So I was reading this in the message, and it says, Your words are so choice, so tasty, I prefer them to the best home cooking. Okay? The best home cooking. I'll tell you a little bit about my bad eating habits. The other night, I was, I think I, I think it was night, it might have been morning. I know I was laying, I was laying down, and I was like, I am craving angel hair pasta with red meat sauce and white Alfredo ravioli. I mean, I'm just like, I mean, it's just, I, I can't get it out of my mind. So I do what any wise person would do. And they get out their phone and they text Deanne and say, I'm going to the store and I'm going to get whatever you need to make angel hair, meat sauce, and Alfredo ravioli, and even garlic toast. 
rest, okay? I mean, I'll do whatever. I just, just tell me what you need. And, um, and she said, oh, actually, I have all the stuff for that. And I said, praise the Lord. I'm like, that is amazing. So then she called me a little bit later and said, actually, I am missing just this item. I just need whatever it was, milk. And I said, no problem. I am on my way. I am getting that milk. No problem. She was like, oh, and I do need and she told me, one jar of whatever it was, no problem. I mean, I need this, so it is no problem. So then she said, oh, wait, I, I think I might not have angel hair pasta. I have the other kind. Is that okay? No, no, it's not okay, but I'm heading to the store. I will get that angel hair pasta. And then she said, and I think I'm out of butter. I said, don't worry. I'm just going to buy plenty of it so you can make it. She was like, no, no, no. I'm like, you can make it a bunch of times. It just sounds so good. Okay? I mean, it's best but what would happen if we woke up saying oh I am so hungry for some direction and some instruction and some correction and some Holy Spirit time I'm so hungry that I'll get up and I'll get out of my comfort zone and I will wipe off my crusty eyes and I will sit down and flip on the light and I will open the pages of your word and I will feast and I will feast and I will feast because I'm hungry for you, God. I'm hungry for you, God. I want to see an outpouring. I want to see a revival. So, God, I'm going to feast, and I'm going to feast, and I'm going to feast. And when I feel like nothing's happening, I'm just going to keep eating and eating and eating and eating until I feel full. Until I feel full. Is there anybody tonight that just wants to keep eating until they feel full? Until they feel something happening? We just, we just eat a little tiny appetizer and move on. But I want to feast. I want to crave God's word like a home-cooked meal. Amen? Amen. And in closing, if the musicians would come back to the front... It says this in Psalms 119. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. The Berean Study Bible says this. Abundant peace belongs to those who love your instructions. Nothing can make them stumble. How many of you could just use peace? I mean, just use peace. I mean, the devil just loves to torment Christians. He does. But the Bible says great peace comes to those who love instruction. Great peace comes to those who love the law of the Lord. It's pretty simple, right? If we would begin to feast on this, we would begin to hunger for this, if we would begin to have a great love for it, then just peace begins to come, right? I mean, do you believe what God says? I'd like to do something a little different tonight. Those of you, if you have your Bibles with you, if you would grab them, and those of you, if you don't have them with you, if you grab one from the pew, I think we got, we got plenty of Bibles in the sanctuary that every person could, could have one, okay? And if you have a verse of Scripture that comes to mind, maybe something you love, like I love Psalms 3.3, 3, that God's the shield around me. He's my glory. He's the lifter of my head. Sometimes I just have to quote that over and over. Whatever you love, okay? You just find something that you, you need, you love, you want. And then I'm going to ask in just a moment if you would come up to the front and you begin to pray God's word into your life. This was something that I've been saved a long time went through Bible schools, been in, under great leadership, but just in the last few years, the Lord began to speak to me about praying his word. And maybe it's something you do all the time, and if so, that's awesome, but if not, this is actually extremely important. Pray God's word. And it was really weird because Anthony was telling that to the teenagers, trying to talk to them about praying God's word and praying psalms over their life. And 
I mean, it just, it sounds kind of silly in your own self, right? I mean, why, why would we pray God's word? But, but see what happens is God's word is a sword, right? And so he already proclaimed things out for you. But as you begin to speak them, that two-edged sword goes forth and things begin to happen. All right, God's word is already out there. It's already powerful enough. But when you begin to speak God's word out, you begin to pray God's word back to him. His word doesn't return void, right? Come on, his word doesn't return void, right? Amen. So I'm going to ask all of you just begin to move. If you can kneel and you want to kneel up here at the front, if you want to sit in any of these front rows, just get out of wherever you're sitting right now. Just move from where you're at. So God, I'm serious about this. I'm coming out of my spot where I normally sit. I'm going out of where I'm normally at and I'm taking your word and I'm going to begin to proclaim your word. Whatever it is, you just begin to, you begin to read that, not as you're reading those words, but as you begin to take those words and you begin to pray them out to the Lord and you begin to call them out to the Lord you say God this is your word this is your word you correct me with this you teach me with this you train me with this you make the enemy flee away from me with this God I'm gonna claim this word I'm gonna believe that you are the healer I'm gonna believe that by your stripes I am healed I'm gonna believe that you are the restorer of my family I'm gonna believe that you would move heaven and earth to rescue me I'm gonna pray your word until I see heaven touch down in my life I'm going to pray it until I see a change. I'm going to pray it until I feel full. I'm going to pray it until there's miracles and signs and wonders. I'm going to proclaim your word out of my mouth back to you in faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
you, Lord. You have no rival. You have no equal. Lord, now and forever you reign. And we praise you tonight for that. Thank you for your word that lives in our heart. Your word is life to us tonight, Jesus. We thank you tonight, Lord, that we felt a ministry of the Holy Spirit working in this place today. And Father, tonight as we just go forward uh, into this week, we pray for the guidance and the peace, the protection from above. Lord, just let your Holy Spirit go before us, Lord, guiding us into this week. Uh, Lord, I thank you, Father, that uh, we were able to gather into this place tonight to worship you, to praise you, and receive this message in our hearts. So bless this evening, and Father, bless this week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, just take some time and fellowship as you go out this week and get ready. I hear tomorrow it's going to be a big snow, so uh, get ready. All the kids are excited. Snow day is coming. <laughs> Have a good week, everybody. We'll see you Wednesday night, 7 o'clock.
Lennon song. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever heard John Lennon? I don't listen to him a lot. But there's one song that it sounds like, and I can't remember what it is. Oh, I know what it is. That, you know that song? That's what I did. I did the grandma. 
and then I got to do it's always it's always available. So wait, oh no, okay. It's like when you when you sign up for Apple Music, any kind of thing. Oh, I got that one on iTunes. Okay. Did y'all ever do something that you guys did that you did not I say demons and I say scary mice and I say all the way from Oh. Plans to work on that one for a year. Yeah, you have to go to your I'm not mountain. You know what I find?